Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America, and scandal after scandal are following Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Guys, Tim Walls may be the worst selection she made, and there's a lot of reasons why. We're going to get into them in a series of videos today. But before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out, and they help our channel continue to grow. And if you are not watching us on YouTube, then go ahead, look in the lower right-hand corner, type that address bar into your, or type that address into your address bar, and come over there and give us a subscription absolutely for free. Just hit the subscribe button, doesn't cost you a dime, but it really helps us. A lot of speculation has been made about why, why would Kamala Harris pick Tim Walls? There's so many other governors. You had Shapiro, right? You had Mark Kelly. There's so many other people. Mark Kelly being a senator from Arizona, if you don't know, and a, and a former NASA astronaut. So many other people with higher profiles than Tim Walls. Why did she pick Tim Walls? Well, there's some theories out there. I have mine. I've shared it with you. But I'm not the only one to share that theory. CNN Republican analyst Scott Jennings shared that theory. And he did it after, after Van Jones, who used to work for former President Obama, gave the same theory. And I think it's worth actually talking about because this is what the Democrat Party has become. It's become so radicalized, so radicalized, so anti-Semitic, in my opinion, that Scott Jennings followed Van Jones and said, you know, let me think about this. Shapiro was the better choice and she didn't pick him. Why? Well, maybe it's because Shapiro is Jewish and Kamala Harris is Democrat base is anti-Semitic, and it's not a fringe group. It's a large portion of the radical left. Now, not your typical Democrats, no, absolutely not. But the radicalized left, those people, they're not just anti-Israel, which is one thing, and, and, and that bothers me, but that would be at least a reasonable debate. A lot of them are anti-Jewish. I want you to listen to this and let me know what you think in the comments. Who they are, Kamala Harris, absolutely bowed down to the radical left in her party by not picking Shapiro, who is Jewish. There was a nasty campaign run against him. Everybody knows it. No one wants to admit it, but everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. and, she wound, about and, she, and she wound up choosing the person who was not Jewish and not as talented and not from the state that she has to win. He did a nice job tonight. Everybody can see why he was the best choice, but she couldn't do it because the party is somewhat awash in anti-Semitism. And, and for Walls, when he did what he did during the riots, to me, it was him saying, I don't have the strength or the character to stand up to this anarchy. So in two big decision points for this ticket, they've showed us they will always bow down to the radical left. So I think if you, if you wanna talk about normal, to the normal people in this country, bowing down to the radical left is not normal, it shouldn't be normal, and it should be a f flashing red light uh, to the normies of America that this is not the ticket for you. You know, um, one of the big issues in this election is a woman's right to choose. And guess what? Kamala Harris got a choice to make, and she got to make the choice who was going to be her running mate and who she was going to go into the next 90 days in, and maybe the next four years, and maybe the next eight years. You don't get to tell her who she has to run with. She gets to choose that. That's what leaders do. There's no way you can say Tim Waltz is radical because he wants to feed kids. He doesn't want kids to go home. You know who are who gets hungry is white kids, black kids, brown kids, poor kids get hungry. That doesn't discriminate. That's I didn't not say the. That. That's I didn't not say the. That. But that's not. A, that's Tim Waltz's policy. That's not a radical. That. Left. I said it was radical also, to let Minneapolis burn. Do you, you agree? Yeah. No, or but, but but let's go back to 2020. If you want to have a contest about who's more radical, you know it was radical sending troops out to clear protesters out in front of the White House uh, so he could have a, Donald Trump could have a photo op. You wanna know what's radical? Not telling people on January 6th to stop that you lost the election and that Trump, 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 uh, his own vice president, Mike Pence, who won't come in a football field length of him right now, that's radical. There, That's there who your there, guy is. I'll take Tim Walz any day. There, there should have been there should have been troops on the streets of Minneapolis immediately. It was but, burning you know, to the ground. You know, let me just you know, let me just say one thing yeah, while you, before yeah. you come in, uh, and that is because you brought up Josh Shapiro. Yeah. We have been talking about the fact that there was a campaign against him. Ugly. That was clearly um, I, I want to say because based on the fact that he was Jewish, he doesn't have any different uh, policy 
ideas no. than the other people. However, I don't think we have any evidence that that is why she didn't pick him. In fact, if you watched him tonight, and I want to stay on the people who are on the ticket, but if you watched him tonight, he has top of the ticket energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not VP energy. Yeah, and there's no to, way in my, yes, there's listen, no I, way I, that that I, wasn't part of it. I know Jamie has we some good reporting on this, and I have now. some visibility into this. Yes. I think that there was a real, um, I don't think he was excluded for uh, that reason. I'm not sure he was excluded at all. I think there was a mutual yes. meeting of the minds as to whether this was the right fit for him uh, with her. I, I appreciate as the only, oh, no, no, you're here. But just let me, oh, yes, all of us. <laughs> but I appreciate your, uh, I, I'm, you know, anti-Semitism is something that a lot of us have faced in different ways and my family has faced and so on. Um, I don't like to see it exploited uh, here. One of the things that separated this rally from a Trump rally is it felt very wholesome. It felt very positive. It wasn't just a series of sort of appeals to hate and division and uh, grievance. And uh, so I, I think, you know, I mean, I understand the talking point. I'm sure we'll hear more. Scott, give me one he said, he said second. Was, no, Scott, he, he Scott, Scott, one moment. Take a beat. I think it's important to add to that two things that we have from our reporting. One is that even going into this selection, Josh Shapiro had some, let's just say, hesitancy or questions about whether he wanted to be the number two. Yep. Uh, you may remember that three weeks ago, there were a lot of people who were not sure that Kamala Harris was going to be the most exciting ticket. It, it feels very different now. <clears throat> and he is someone who definitely has ambitions to run. And he was looking at down the road. And we have new reporting tonight from our team that, in Good fact, evening. when he no, went no, into no. his vetting meeting and also in his in-person meeting with Harris, he made it very clear what kind of vice president he wanted this to be. It was much more of a two for the price of one. He wants to be in the room. He wanted to have uh, a real say in th these things. I, there are sources we've talked to who feel that in those meetings, Shapiro sort of set the stage not to be picked mm -hmm. as her number two. Yeah. Okay, everybody stand by because our special coverage is